Hey, what's going on guys? Lone coming at you with a, another little guide here. This one's going to be covering how to group your prefabs within Rust Edit to have a very organized workspace. So let's go ahead and make something. So I'm gonna Google for a moment and see if I can find something that interests me that I would like to recreate in Rust Edit itself. All right, so this house looks pretty cool. It's very basic, pretty minimal as far as uh, what I think the prefab count would be. And that's one really big thing I want to suggest is starting off small and simple instead of really large and massive because it's very easy to lose interest or not be able to finish something the larger it is. So starting off small, I cannot recommend enough. So I think this is a good start. You may notice that I have a canvas over to the side of me where I have a ton of prefabs laid out. I just recently uploaded a video um, where you can actually access this and I'll link it down below as well. So it's basically a little toolkit to help you guys out with a bunch of prefabs. So it makes it a lot easier to visualize things so you know what you can use and what you should not use. Um, and so you don't even have to type anything in and you can just drag it out. All right, so once you're satisfied with your prefab or monument, uh, there's a few different ways you can actually lock it into a prefab, which is like grouping it all together as if it's one entity. The first one and probably the easiest one is just creating a prefab based off of the selection. So what you could do is just uh, fly up above it, drag your mouse to select all of it. And then from there, you can open up the prefabs tab up at the top. And at the very bottom of it, you'll click quick create from selection and you can call this whatever you want i always check this box down here that says convert selection to group this basically just makes it to where the next time i click this instead of it being 191 objects it'll make it be one so i'll show you what i mean there so save prefab so now if i click it it's as if it's one entity here this does have a few downsides the first one being so it creates the anchor point in the middle roughly so that way, whenever you drag it around, it's going to go in the ground a little bit. So it's not an ideal way of creating a prefab, but it's a fast one if it's applicable to what you're making. Additionally, you can't save things like the splat or topology or terrain, or anything like that. It's only the prefabs itself. So the other way of prefabbing something, let's just go ahead and duplicate this over here. To duplicate, by the way, you can hit Control D, little tip there. So I'm going to go ahead and break this and to where it's back to 191 prefabs. So now everything is separated like it was just a moment ago. And the other way of creating a prefab that you've made is by hitting create custom prefab right here, the top one. It's gonna spawn this circle in. Anything within this circle, it will group together for you. So you just want to drag this circle roughly in the middle of your build, all right? And then what we're gonna do is increase the size of it. To do that, you're gonna go up to the diameter. We'll make it, let's say, 30. 30 should be pretty good. But once we have it at the size that we would like it to encompass our prefab, there's a little checkbox list right here of what you would like to associate your prefab with. Yes, I would like to save the terrain height. Even though there's no hills or anything, I still want the terrain to always be flat right around this building. So I'm going to go ahead and click save and it's going to save the terrain roughly within this white circle and then it's going to fade out gradually in between these two circles. The next one is splat maps and then it's going to have a drop down list of which splats you would like to save. Splats are like grass, dirt, gravel, stuff like that. To make it easy, I only ever save the splats that aren't the primary one. So in this case, the primary splat would be the grass. So I don't want to save that one just because if somebody were to place this, let's say in the desert and then drop it down, I don't want grass to spawn. So what I'm going to save is just dirt and gravel. So we'll go ahead and hit dirt and then scroll down, save gravel. I really don't care about the biome type here, but if you wanted to, you could make it to where it'll always apply arid or temperate, arctic, tundra. So we'll just uncheck that one since it's not needed. I didn't apply any topology to this build. However, if you were to make a full-fledged monument, you would probably want to apply the building or monument or cliff topology, uh, just some of those. So if you wanted to do that, you can just do that. And then you can select, I normally select everything, um, but you can select the applicable ones to whatever you're making. So if you're making something that's, you know, just a generic monument, you'd probably select monument. So that way your, um, if you apply monument topology, at least 
it'll spawn in the junk piles, so on and so forth. So if that one applies to you, you can save the topology layers that you applied. The next one is alpha maps. This one would be as if you actually alpha any part of your monument or area. So what I mean by that is in the terrain painter tool, there's an option called alpha if you aren't already aware. And with this, you can basically erase the terrain so that way you can see through it. So that's what this would be saving. So we'll go ahead and go back to creating our custom prefab again. So if we had, let's say, a basement to this build and it went through the ground and I applied a alpha layer of erasing the terrain, basically, I would want to save that. So that way terrain doesn't cover up my hole. So you can do that. If you also have a build that's big enough for roads or rivers, you can also save those. Convert selection to group. This is also in that other option that I showed you a minute ago. It basically just makes this entire thing one entity. And then we can go ahead and give it a name. We'll just call this junk house. V2, I don't know, create prefab. Great, so now we have our prefab and unlike the first one where it will snap to the ground, this one actually stays on the ground itself. It doesn't actually clip through. So another benefit is that the fact that we saved the layer masks like the splat and terrain. If you wanted to apply those, it adds a few options here at the bottom. So you can do height, splat. And now it added a little bit of splat you can uh, move your prefab around if you need to just to balance it out a little bit. But yeah, that's basically the two ways how to create a custom prefab. I hope the little speed through of this build helped you um, advance your knowledge of utilizing prefabs to fabricate builds. This isn't technically modeling or anything. It's just using the Rust assets to create custom things. You know, it's, it's pretty fun stuff. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you have any other suggestions or comments or questions, feel free to drop down below and I will catch you in the next one.